to address your your um, concern that there are more progressives in in coffee party than there are other uh, political affiliations that's true but let me tell you just a little story of the first two months of coffee party and I think you'll especially be happy maybe all of you would like to hear this I think that the, the, the Tea Party's tactics were especially offensive to people with values of inclusion and um, tolerance and cooperation, the kind of values that progressives hold dear. And so many progressives did come to the uh, coffee party when that Facebook water hose turned on and our computers were just you know, pouring forth with, he, we, we couldn't go to sleep. You know. um, but the blessing was, and a lot of it actually came here from Denver, was that there were Republicans who had the same concerns and shared the same values, who came to us and said, how can we help? You know, if we had had some sort of political litmus test that excluded people, um, then we would have missed out on all of that collaboration from many uh, libertarians and independents as well, have really enriched our philosophy. So then we had to deal with an inherent contradiction. We named ourselves Coffee Party, uh, which is an alternative to tea. And the media, which is always looking for two professional wrestlers to put in the ring, you know, or ultimate fighters, kept inviting us to debates. If Annabelle was on, we, we could usually control the messaging enough so that we didn't engage in that that level of polarization. But we had people all over the United States and you had a situation where Fox was like, we want you to we want you to come and be like a coffee party representative in the middle of a tea party, you know, political oh CNN, okay. February and March were periods of a tremendous growth. And part of the growth was because we we were playing into the game that was already being played of political polarization. Oh, now the coffee party has risen to be the opposite of Tea Party. And and it was interesting to the media and it was interesting to the public. And our membership grew really fast. And just like those politicians who are always, especially on the right, they're trying to find something really outrageous to say because they're addicted to attention. We began to be addicted to the attention. And so I was a part of the media team, uh, the the uh, what do you call it, communications team, and all the YouTube videos that, that did really well were made by me. And we would have a team of people decide what would go in those videos, and that same team would try to give uh, talking points to the different chapters around the United States. And we were always dealing with this pressure. Well, the, the media is pushing us to say things that are incendiary. They're pushing us to attack the Tea Party. What do we say? What do we say? What do we say? And Annabelle was very good at always giving us a message that didn't attack people or impugn their motives, um, try to define who we are based on values. It's hard to hold together a coalition of people who have different ideas. Is, especially when the TV is telling you if you have different ideas you're enemies right. but she was giving us great talking points to, and we were always navigating through that but at a certain point we kept running back to Annabelle and saying okay we need messaging we need talking points we need things to disseminate and she says well why this is because we're gonna be on TV and she said well if that's the only reason that's not good enough um, I could give you talking points but since we have this opportunity and we built this national membership, what I really need is some time to really talk to all the greatest minds around the country, which she's been doing, to read all the most reputable studies and reports and articles which she's been doing, and figure out what the country really needs. And once she understands what the country really needs, then she's going to communicate the message. God, I love it. I love yeah. it. It's since she's, she's, Annabelle you know, for president. <laughs>